I'm going to show you a couple of analogies that I use in my classroom when I'm teaching electrochemistry. I think analogies are very powerful, students enjoy them, and they're, they help make the learning a little bit more fun and more concrete. So the first one I'm going to do has to do with the table of standard reduction potentials. I'm going to try to explain to the students how this is set up. And for this, I'm going to need some volunteers. And Jan, you look like a, you'd be a good standard for the class. All right, so if you would back up to the board, I'm going to use you at, at zero, OK? You have standard height here. And this is Jan. All right, so Jamie, you're always good for someone tall. You have to make sure ahead of time that you get some differences in height. All right. Using Do I need to mark myself? <laughs> yeah. All right, we got Jamie here. <laughs> and Priscilla, I. If, could you stand under that line? OK, we've got Priscilla. All right, thank you. Peg, you just get a few students in the class. OK, Peg, I've got you. All right, I've measured everybody's height individually, but I can give you the difference between, in height between Priscilla and Jamie right now. And a difference in height is 35 centimeters. Okay, that's the difference between Jamie and Priscilla. Even though initially I, was, I said Jan was the standard, so I could report on the table here that Priscilla is at minus 10.3, and Jamie is, of course, at minus 30, uh, excuse me, plus. Uh, 22. And Peg is at, let me do it this way, plus 11. Okay, so how much taller is Jamie than Peg? This is in centimeters. Peg is 11 centimeters taller than. Um, Jan, and Jamie's 22 taller, so we can see the difference in height is 11 centimeters. Okay, even though I met, I would, on this scale here, I've done it relative to Jan as our standard, I could have picked arbitrarily the standard anywhere, but what I'm getting is the difference in height using this kind of a scale where I've got, if Priscilla's at minus 10.3 and Peg's at plus 11, then there's got to be 21.3 centimeters between them. So I use that with the students to explain that all of that table of reduction potentials, let's put a salt bridge in here, is we put a standard hydrogen half cell over here. And we're going to have to bubble hydrogen gas in. And then our other side, we test various metals versus it. So looking on the chart here that we have, hydrogen is at zero. So what I, for instance, if I put silver in, I would put a piece of silver, and I'd have silver nitrate solution because I have to have negative ions and positive ions for a neutral solution. And over here, I'm going to have a little acid to get that reaction going. And I'm going to connect them and read the volt reading. And I'm going to get a reading on that of 0 0.80 when I do silver. Now, if I instead change this and put copper in here, Excuse me. All right. The, the table tells me that copper is 0.34. Well, 
Well, what would the reading have to be then? The difference between them is 0.46, I think, right? If I got my math correct. And we can do that for anything. We can put zinc, whatever, against hydrogen, but then say, hey, if I had a cell where I put silver on one side and copper on the other side, without measuring them directly, I can tell you what that voltage reading has to be in the case of a spontaneous reaction between them. So it's an analogy that I use with the students before we start doing problems on using the table of reduction potentials.